So hello everybody, uh, today um, is um, our webinar day. It's 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. here in the UK. We are super excited to get this webinar started. So whilst we wait a short time for people to join, uh, we can cross off the housekeeping duties. Um, we do love to hear from our guests. So please, if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit them via the Q&A functionality within Zoom. Uh, the the webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand uh, within 24 hours. So uh, let's begin. Today, as you can see on the screen, um, we are going to be talking about permission sets and profiles. Uh, as you all know, Salesforce launched user access and permissions assistant, which is an enhanced and streamlined tool for administering administrating profiles, permission sets and permission set groups. But after discussing with a group of Elements.Cloud customers, they have told us that they want more. In response to that feedback, we have launched a new and enhanced collection of profile and permission sets analysis features. And today we welcome Brooke Monkern, who is our Senior Customer Services Manager, who will share his knowledge and guide us through the latest features from Elements. So without further ado, I will hand over to you, Brooke. Thank you very much, Leanne. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, Nervous, I admit, but um, I guess it comes with the uh, with the territory. Um, so, welcome everyone. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, to join us, and uh, hopefully, uh, we'll show some interesting uh, features for you. Uh, relate uh, to uh, situations you're in with profiles and permission sets, and maybe um, help you organize. Uh, and, and run your days a little more efficiently uh, with our capabilities. Um, so a little bit about me in the background. Uh, I was an Elements employee for about a year now. And prior to that, I was a customer. So uh, I literally drank the Kool-Aid. Uh, although, no, we don't serve Kool-Aid here. Uh, all right, dad jokes aside. <laughs> uh, let's frame up the situation we all face as administrators, as, as platform architects, as uh, people who uh, work inside of Salesforce. Uh, security is real. It's a really big topic. It's been out of control for a long time relative to uh, the methods we've had to employ over the years to, to wrangle uh, security. Uh, starting in 1999, uh, way back, uh, we had profiles. And then in 2012, we got permission sets. And then 2020, we got permission set groups and muting. Uh, and the reality is that while Salesforce has evolved the standard approach to uh, security, uh, we haven't all adopted and retrofitted our platforms. Uh, reason being that it's hard. How do you take 10, 15 year old org and convert it to a modern standard of profiles without really upsetting the apple cart, if you will. Um, there's there's an awful lot that goes into uh, analyzing security and a lot of people who like doing things the way they've always ever done them. So uh, upsetting them uh, is also uh, not a good thing. Um, the reality here is that most orgs uh, have some number of profiles and permission sets and permission set groups uh, that uh, all exist together in a complex form. Now, complexity isn't inherently bad, right? Uh, it's just complicated. What we need are tools to help people manage the complex and things should be improved, right? Uh, it's fair to say that there are some ideas uh, that just aren't that good uh, when they were implemented and probably ought not be uh, sustained moving forward. I'll give you an example of that from my history. Uh, I joined a 14-year-old org as an architect. Uh, we had lots of admins over the years. We had lots of changes over time. And of course, you know, the requisite uh, examples of profiles, permission sets, permission set groups that had been applied uh, as the changes came out, uh, but not necessarily retrofitted back. And so when I decided to investigate uh, profile permission set, who has access to what, you can imagine it was a bit of an archeological dig. Uh, we had layers and layers of features. Uh, we had lots of clues uh, explaining, you know, small snippets about what had been done and why, uh, but it was always kind of a fuzzy understanding and you were always at risk of breaking something. Um, so the report itself 
uh, was tough. I had to go through and parse out each of the profiles and permission sets granularly. And I ended up using an Excel spreadsheet uh, to control uh, everything, to document it. Um, obviously, there has to be a better way. Thankfully, Salesforce has come out with the, uh, the, the new analyzer tool sets. Uh, we're coming out with tool sets that uh, help you work in context. Uh, of our tool and in the world that you uh, live in. And then um, I'll tell you one funny thing about what I investigated and uncovered was that um, most people don't name profiles and permission sets accurately. For example, I found a permission set called manage other people's dashboards. And inside of that was the modify all permission. And it was assigned to six people who were uh, report experts that love to help people. And over time, they needed access to everything uh, so that they could help more people. And that was the, uh, the result. So again, <laughs> we need more information. We need ways to manage the complexity and we need ways to uh, then take action on the insights that we uh, develop. So what I'm going to do is stop talking at you uh, without visuals. So you don't have to stare at my face anymore. Uh, and I'm going to switch over to a view uh, that hopefully will look familiar to you all. Desktop three, share. There's a Salesforce setup screen. So uh, hopefully this is familiar to most people. Um, I am looking at Salesforce setup. I am going to navigate into a profile because I am curious to see what my account managers can do. Right now, I can open up the account manager uh, and I'm able to see everything that I would normally see as an account manager or a system admin would. If I wanted to drill in to see what was capable in this screen, I would need to continue to scroll in the immortal words of Moana. I am still scrolling. And I haven't found a lot of interesting information yet, as we all know. Um, I'm bent on finding out what the capabilities of this profile are from a platform and uh, feature capability. And so I'm looking through all of this, and it's a lot. Uh, Elements has decided that it is easier if we can analyze the access with a button. So what I'm showing you here is uh, access to the Elements Metadata Dictionary and Documentation Repository, explaining everything that we currently know about this profile, including analyzing the access. So within a couple of seconds, by being on the profile, I was able to press a button and get the categories of access levels that have been granted to this particular profile. Okay. So if I were at a high level, I would scan and look to see application visibilities, uh, class access for, for Apex classes, all important, 79 object permissions. Now, relative to my org, that sounds about right. Other people org will have totally different numbers based on the number of objects they have. User permissions, tab visibilities, that's a lot of tabs. But most importantly, let's take a look and see if there's any scary user permissions here. I can drill in. I'm drilled in now. And I'm looking at all of the features that are enabled for this particular profile. Okay, so in this case, uh, run reports. That's good. Um, but none of the view all, modify all capabilities that uh, we are so afraid of. Uh, what's interesting about this uh, report as well is that sometimes you want to see everything there is to see. So I can actually generate a report, which will then appear inside uh, my elements environment. And effectively show me everything that this profile is capable of doing uh, as an Excel spreadsheet. So I can take much higher level control of the insights using the, uh, uh, the grand view that we can present. Um, I wanna show you again, how simple that was. So just repeating, I'm now in uh, finance. Let's see what finance can do. So we jump over to finance rather than scrolling through. I'm just going to jump over to analyze access. This is the finance profile. Now I can export this, right? Uh, and I have two spreadsheets now if I wanted it. But what's maybe more interesting than that is saying, how does finance compare to account management? So now I have the ability to actually pull up a, a UI that will allow me to show the comparisons of up to 100 different profiles and permission sets so that I can see, maybe I'm asking the question, should finance and account management have the same profile? What are the differences between the two of them? So I'm comparing 
And here I have a heat map that says there's 84% similarity overall between these two profiles. And the similarities tend to cluster in these particular areas. So they have all the same classes effectively. There's only two differences. Uh, there's only three differences out of the uh, application visibilities and then the user permissions, 79% uh, similarity here. I can drill in and actually compare the differences between the two. So if I were maybe working down an investigation of, um, you know, how many profiles can I consolidate down to a single profile and share among all those users, and then simply take the differences and put them into permission sets, right? It's a great question to ask. Um, and so in this case, uh, given that profiles should probably have all the system permissions and permission sets should have all of the other feature sets, if I went back and simply looked at merge the features uh, between these two at the permission level and move them to profiles, I'd have a pretty good indicator of how hard that would be here. 79% says there were only 12 I'd have to work on, and then uh, the remainders can be pushed to permission sets. Uh, thankfully, Salesforce has come up with a really remarkable tool that actually allows you to modify uh, profiles and permission sets to, you know, where it's uh, simple to do. So you could jump into their app. Uh, if you wanted to, but I actually prefer to do things manually so I can uh, create the profiles and migrate everybody over gracefully, knowing full well what went in and what stayed out. Um, but what I want to do is put an earmark, for example, to figure out that I want to merge these accounts, uh, profiles and the finance profiles, right? So I've got finance and account manager. Now I can actually create a story inside of elements now, the element story component is not something we're focused on here, but it's part of our actionable insights concept where you've found a bunch of information relevant to something you want to do. Now create a story to do it. And this way you can track all of this great insight that you've just derived <coughs> and schedule it for a future uh, uh, backlog item, something to address. So new um, profile, uh, if I could spell, uh, merge case, let's say accounts management slash finance, right? Put in the details, yada, yada, yada. And then we basically create that case, okay? So now inside of elements, we have a case. If you use JIRA, we can synchronize to JIRA. We've got a backlog item, we can go through the rest of our profiles and permission sets looking for uh, comparisons if we want to, um, and then create stories for those as part of an initiative that we have. What I will say about creating an initiative to consolidate profiles and permission sets is that it's best to have an idea in mind ahead of time, right? The idea is I want to create as few profiles as possible and create as many permission sets as is necessary for the granular access and then create permission set groups to apply them to people who are in specific jobs that need to have certain types of access to get their jobs done, right? Come in with a theme, design it ahead of time, then go into a tool like Elements uh, in context to evaluate how you might uh, accomplish the goals that you want. I wanted to show you inside of the Elements UI. Uh, I will give a very quick introduction to the Elements UI. This is Salesforce metadata, listed out in you know nested list form. So I'll go over here and I'll show you, this is Salesforce setup. This is how we see Salesforce, right? So all of your objects, your classes, anything that's metadata scannable summed up for you in context. <clears throat> I was in uh, profiles and so I can actually just scroll down to uh, profiles. If I could read, there we are. Got my account manager profile. The same right sidebar appears. Everything that you wanted to do is all here as well. Uh, but what's interesting about this UI, since we're at the global level, I can actually run a report that uh, allows me to get a full expose, if you will, of the profile and permission set similarity scores that you saw in focus detail. Uh, but brought out at the entire org level. Now, this report itself 
is going to look uh, pretty overwhelming if you don't know exactly what it is you're looking for. But what we've got across the top are all profiles and permission sets. And then across the bottom or across the sidebar, the same thing, all profiles and permission sets. And we're looking for percent similarities. So if you put this in Excel, for example, and you wanted to color code and highlight all of the profiles and permission sets that had a lot of similarity, those are good merge candidates. It's great to be able to view things uh, at this aggregate level, uh, this high level, uh, so that you can get a sense for where you are at the 30,000 foot level and then drill in a little deeper. So in this case, account manager is identical to account manager. It's 44% the same as admin. So there's a lot of differences there. The lower overlap is better in a world where profiles and permission sets should be uniquely different from one another. So you don't have redundancies. So one way I might do this uh, is say, here's everything that has nothing in common, that's good but I'm targeting things that have a lot in common. So account manager and product have a lot in common. Uh, I can navigate back to elements and take a look at that in detail if I wanted to uh, using the tools that I just showed you, uh, or I could start creating work uh, items, documentation and a story that talk about the profiles and permission sets that I, I want to focus on in context to a larger epic that I'm working on potentially. Okay, so uh, what else do we know? Uh, I have some really interesting features built in here around profiles and permission sets, but more specifically in general, uh, this notion of a change log. So imagine something's changed inside your org uh, that you either did or didn't know about. Uh, and you wanted to find information about when it last changed. So in the case of profiles, uh, we have the ability here to look at when the profile was changed uh, and who it was changed by. Interestingly, if this was something we didn't ex expect and we wanted to know what actually happened, we have the ability to drill in and see what the difference was between versions. That could be very enlightening, uh, especially where um, profiles and permission sets tend to change uh, quite frequently based on the fact that whenever you create a custom field or object, right, uh, you need to add uh, profiles and permission sets as, or excuse me, profiles as part of your uh, questionnaire in the in the create uh, metadata item. So new field, which profiles do you want to give access, read, create, or invisible. Uh, so you do end up seeing a lot of sprawl inside of uh, these particular uh, change log items. And so let's say you wanted to run a change log for the entire org over a period of time. Can actually come in here and run a change log report and we'll just say what happened last week right inside of this org now i know i'm going a little bit off the, the rails with profiles and permission sets but if you want to think about it in this context for a given period of time say overnight uh, i want to know what changed and as i go through and look at what changed i want to pay particular attention to the fact nothing's changed hey that's fantastic or it's not because that means we have a really static org. <laughs> I should have run this report ahead of time. I'm gonna create that change log report and I'm going to expand it uh, to the last month and hope that we have something in here. But the idea is run through this report, look for anything that you didn't expect to have happen, particularly around security and go in and investigate it in a little bit more detail. And you can come into the metadata items uh, inside of the system and look to see who promoted the change. Uh, that's better. So here we have a bunch of changes. So I'm looking at all the changes that occurred over the last month. Here's profile the permission set changed by. So somebody has been using the profile and permission set change utility and making new profiles out of it. Now let's take a look here. This is a type. Let's go up and drop that there. We've got classes, links, and objects, and tabs, and lightning components, and component bundles, and permission sets. This permission set changed. So let's click in here and investigate that a little bit more closely. I hope that this uh, item here has some changes. It's interesting what's changed over time. So I think you're getting the point, right? The explorer capability of elements to help you understand the current state of your system, everything that's changed over time, 
and why it's changing is paramount to ensuring that the platform remains stable. It's not necessarily controlling everything, but it's at least understanding when those changes uh, occur uh, so that you're aware of them and can uh, document them uh, as you see fit. So here we have some more changes. So this is uh, this is interesting stuff, I think. Now I'm gonna kind of pop the brain pan a little bit here with a diagram that uh, is called a UPN diagram, but I admit that it is not in full UPN form. And this is effectively a click path set of standards that you may or may not choose to follow based on different approaches that you uh, might take to investigate profiles and permission sets. Now, this is a work in progress, I fully admit. Uh, I will distill it down into more actionable insights uh, over time. But if you're in Salesforce setup or Salesforce UI, you can navigate to profiles and permission sets and you can drill into a specific profile or a permission set. You can look at the list of assigned users for that particular profile or permission set. Right? You can review the change log history, which we just did. You can inspect the change, which we just did. You can review stories associated with that. So if this profile or permission set had a user story associated with it, we would actually see that uh, documented inside of the uh, change history here. So here's an example of stories that we're managing against that profile and permission set, right? In addition to that, you could attach your own documentation, notes, comments, uh, things of that nature. Um, maybe you wanna see what the profile and permission set was doing or is capable of doing as a result of these changes. You can analyze the access by pressing the button. Right? And it basically sums up everything that it's capable of doing by category. And then I can compare it to other profiles by category, or I can drill down and see what the category access provides. And I can export to reports, right? I can attach those reports to user storage. I can share them in presentations. But effectively what we're doing is giving you the ability to explore all the way through your org, right? On a metadata by metadata item, in this case, profile and permission set, uh, item by item and tease out the relevant details relative to the question you're asking. Why did this change? Who changed it? When did it change? Is it in context to a story? And make sure that all of that information is recorded and understood. So more to come on this uh, as we see it, but as you can see, uh, there's some amazing capabilities uh, baked into this uh, tool set. So with that, Leanne, I have reached what I consider to be a natural breaking point, albeit a bit early. Maybe I talked too fast. Um, no, I'd that's like absolutely to see if there are questions. Fine. I, I hope there are yeah. questions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we did have one question that came through, and it was more around um, when is this going to GA? So. I believe it's in a couple of weeks time after the beta and the customer feedback, is that correct? Uh, that is my understanding is that we are, we are currently in closed trials, uh, working through you know, a, a standardized approach to making sure that when we deploy it, it's well understood, documented. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm working through this to make it easier for people to adopt and, uh, and uh, working with uh, product management to ensure that uh, everything is uh, working as expected. Excellent. Um, so no, otherwise, I don't know if anyone does want to sort of if we leave it a couple of seconds uh, to see if anyone does. Oh, have we got another one? Oh, I've got another question. Um, you showed perm set and profiles or permission set and profiles. What about permission set groups? How does that work in your tool? Currently, we do not have the capability of looking at permission set groups. Uh, it is definitely something we are aware of. Uh, obviously, it's important. I, I can't think of imagining a world where we didn't have permission set groups and continuing to have to manage them, uh, you know, the security as we did. I don't want to go back to 2020 or 2012 for that matter. Um, but in the moment right now, we're, we're producing tools that give people baseline understanding of how their profiles and permission sets exist today. 
uh, and groups will be uh, coming shortly thereafter. I'm not going to speak for product management on that. I'm sure they're watching. They might be uh, listening. Yeah, it's just <laughs> being recorded, so no commitment here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's not I'm... lost on us. It is, it is very, very apparent. Um, and the other thing I do want to say is that I think that uh, Salesforce has done a wonderful job with the new profile and permission set um, utility analyzer from Salesforce Labs. I'll admit it took me 25 minutes to install it inside of my uh, org uh, and get it up and running and exploring with it. Uh, it is a really remarkable tool set and it works beautifully in conjunction with the tools that we're offering where theirs is an app where you will go in with purpose and uh, start to manipulate, analyze. Uh, there's capabilities of, you know, um, why can this user see uh, a certain thing and show you all the ways the user has granted those permissions. We're not approaching it that way. We're looking at the building blocks elements of what you've got. Uh, and so these tools actually work together really nicely. Uh, so I would highly recommend, you know, jumping between those uh, capabilities. I, I think what they have is, 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 is really extraordinary. Uh, I'm excited to see what they come up with next. Um, maybe Excellent. that helps yeah. answer the question about the groups, you know, where you might find the information about groups. Perfect. Uh, we also have, how can I use this information to streamline and organize my data model? Ooh, streamline and organize your data model. So data models are a really interesting concept, right? Who has access to what can lead to uh, questions of who is corrupting my data model, <laughs> right? That's how I <laughs> tend to think about it is I've got a perfect data model until I let my users into the system. No offense if there are users in the system. Uh, <laughs> and so what we like to do is uh, elements is about setting up the foundation, the underpinnings, the technical components that support the business processes that the business is investing in Salesforce for. So we run our business this way. We use Salesforce to support our business this way. And there's two things that go into it. Obviously, the data is principal, first and foremost. It's collection of information that we need in order to make good decisions about what we're doing with our business. Uh, the second piece is how are we using the technology uh, automatically to support uh, the furtherance of, of efficiency, like rapidly creating new records and using formulas to generate reports that uh, aggregate information at uh, you know, the touch of a button. It's fantastic stuff. Uh, we don't do data model in the sense of is the data in conformance, how many things are outside of what we would consider spec, because we don't read data. We care about metadata, how the system is built. The containers are designed to hold the information that's relevant. The automations are designed to transform that information into usable formats for uh, use further down the line analytics insights and uh, help you tease out areas where corruption might be occurring, right? Might be being, you know, the formula is inaccurate. It's tied to six fields. One of those fields has an edit capability that is uh, triggering someone to put in the first pick list value they see to get past the validation rule. We're not telling you that's what they're doing, but we're showing you the possibilities of it. So our tool allows you to explore out into your metadata interdependencies and investigate how your data model might be uh, being used, corrupted by various sources. I don't know if yeah, that I think the per Hopefully yeah, the yeah. The, well, the, the person said um, has followed up and says, or, "Or when I do gather the information and make the changes, how does it affect my data model territories and other features dependent upon profiles, etc." I'm putting you on the spot here. <laughs> yeah, could you Sorry. could you please repeat the question? <laughs> hey, what Shall time is it? Oh. <laughs> it's time to go. Or <laughs> well, maybe we'll come back to that, yes, that I, answer I, I, to that question. I would love to dig into that question uh, in more detail, uh, but I probably have a bunch of questions that I need to ask in order to make sure. You need to I ask. Understand. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Excellent. So if the person wants to uh, leave their name, then I'll make sure that Britt comes back to you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, so the other thing, we've got another question. Once available, will this feature be an added cost or including, included in current plans? Ooh, that's a good question. How much are you willing to pay for a tool like this? <laughs> Wait, don't act now, there's more. We have a free set of bamboo wind chimes coming with every order. Uh, no, it's included. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't feature price. We basically say that uh, this tool is so 
tightly connected to all of its features. The platform is designed to keep you moving through with actionable insights to take the next steps to get to the point where you are satisfied with the investigation you run. And that satisfaction might be uh, investigating profiles and then creating a story and then logging the change log so that everybody who comes thereafter will have insights as to why you did what you did. So the last thing we want you to do is trip over a, a paywall uh, that keeps you from being able to you know, take a logical step. Life is complicated enough in Salesforce. We don't need to mess it up with, with uh, licensing on us. Whoops. Hey, that's my time. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh -huh. uh, we have another question. It says, yeah. uh, is an Elements Academy model, module even, going to be made or is in the making um, on how to use this tool effectively? In the making, as we speak, in the making, we meet on yes. a regular basis to make sure that uh, we teach everybody the. I like to give everybody a, a path through the system, but not prescribe it in a way that uh, forces you to use it a certain way. Uh, you're going to all come at it from different angles, different perspectives, and so we're building content that shows you how you could approach it to get started, make sure that you're efficient as quickly as possible, and then you can adapt it as you go. Uh, so, as you can imagine, some of that content takes a little bit of time, uh, but we've got some fabulous people on the job and the content is improving dramatically every day. So stay tuned. Absolutely. Fantastic. And I think really, I mean, we've whizzed through it, but that's great. Give some people some time back in their diary. But those were all the questions we've got live. And um, I think that will conclude our webinar for today, if that's okay with you, Brooke. I'm, I'm Yes, thank you. Honoured. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon.